Hey everybody, Joseph Adams here with the Tech Ministry blog. Today I'm going to show you my latest Planning Center Online Services report. Uh, it supports a lot of customization without having to do any actual coding. Uh, so let's go check it out. So here's the report. If you've used any of my reports before, this may look a little familiar. Um, but one of the things that we do here a lot is we need to print out um, a printed report for every position on our tech team. Um, and I want a little bit of variability for each position. So if you look here, this is a sheet for my service producer. And I've got several different columns that I want him to have. Um, and then I might, for my next position, for my video director, he only needs maybe these columns. And so uh, part of this report is that it allows you to dynamically choose which columns each person gets within one report. So I don't have to do this multiple times for every position. I have one report that I print, and it prints out a custom sheet for every person that's scheduled on that team uh, with everything that they need. So let's jump into the report code and kind of see how that works. So this is the report code here. Uh, I've called it the matrix plans split teams uh, support. And I call it this because we actually print our plans from the matrix view. We've got two venues here that we run simultaneously. And I schedule similar structured teams to each one. And so I just want to be able to hit print one time and get one set of paperwork for both venues. And then I can pass out all that paperwork at one time. So I've loaded into the matrix here uh, both venues, Auditorium 1 and 2, with the various teams that are scheduled for each of these. And if I look here in the matrix play and split team support report, uh, here's how I can customize it. So uh, first of all, I have an array of service times. And I've chosen 9 AM and 6 PM. We don't currently have a 6 PM service time. Uh, but this is how it could work for your team if you did. You would just uh, put in all the different service times that you have. Um, and then if you have non-split teams, which most of these teams are, these are actually all like regular teams, I guess that's what they call them. Um, you can print, uh, you can either choose to say, I want to print a report uh, for every time for every non-split team for every one of these times or just print them one time. So maybe, for example, uh, you've got that one team scheduled and they're going to serve for every service time you have. Well, you probably don't want to print out a new piece of paperwork for them for every time. But maybe a split team, you'll have different people. And so that allows you to pick and choose which way you want to do that. But down here is how the team positions and columns works. Um, so you can see here, this is kind of a description of how to do it. Uh, so you need to have a, a line with the video team. That's the name of the team. A colon, and then the name of the position, and then another colon. And then here I've listed out each of the columns separated by a semicolon. So for my live stream operator, I only want them to get the, the, the plan item note called leader, program, and live stream. But maybe for my service producer, I want them to get leader, program, LED wall, TV, side screens, or live stream. Now remember, these are plan item notes. And so if you go to your team settings uh, and you go to the settings tab here, these plan item note categories, that's where these come from. And so I've got these put in here. Um, so that's where those are coming from. So you'll need to make sure that you match uh, in the report code this name precisely. Um, and then for a couple other of my positions, I actually want uh, some of these notes to not be in columns, but I want them to be in rows along the item description. So let's look at uh, the report. I'll give you an example. If we scroll down to my sound position, So here's my, my, one of my sound team positions. I actually want them to get these notes here in rows instead of columns. And so that's how I kind of put that in here. Uh, you do a pipe, and then anything that comes after the pipe separated by semicolons 
multiple appear in the rows. So this allows us to print out the report not necessarily alphabetically by position or by teams, but in the exact order that I want them in, which is, it just makes it faster for our team. That way we can, uh, we can just print them out in the way that I'm going to hand them out. And so that's just very helpful for us, and that's way, the way I've designed this report. Uh, the report header area, which is this place at the top, you can customize whether you want the logo, how you want the date to be formatted, things like that. Um, and then if you've used some of my reports in the past, checklists is something that I've come up with, a way to print on the reports automatically. Um, it's just a way to help your t different positions have something that they can remember to do. Um, and so now each of these categories is dynamic. You can have as many of these as you want as long as you have what we call a unique identifier. So let's just kind of walk through how that works. Um, checklists will use plan note fields to prevent those helpful to do or reminders for each position on your team. But you must create the plan note category in this format. It has to be checklist, space, dash, space, the team name, space, dash, space, the position name. So if I look over here at my settings for this team, um, I've got, here down here at plan note categories, I've got all these checklists. And so I can put in a plan note for every one of these positions and when I use the unique identifier at the beginning that's how I know kind of what category it falls in. So for example let's say I want to have a checklist uh, called during rehearsal and then I want to have this one item that says all videos tested. It would look like this. It would have the identifier at the beginning and then say all videos tested. So if I come to my plan and scroll down here and look at, um, so here's, here's one that would print during um, the, my, I called it my during rehearsal category. You can call it whatever you want. I just have a plan item note in there with this asterisk at the beginning. And when the code runs, it will look for that asterisk. So anything that has the asterisk at the beginning will automatically be put into that category. So you can see I've got several different types configured. I have one called during rehearsal, and that's a, I call it the once type. And then I have a, if I put a tilde at the beginning and I, and I use the service type, it'll print before each service. So here's a, let's see if I can find an example of a before each service. Looks like I have a lot of after each services. We'll just do that. So after each service, you can see it looks different than during rehearsal. During rehearsal, it's called the once type. It just prints a single checkbox. After each service prints a checkbox for every service time in this uh, ministry type. And so um, if this were a split team, it would only print the one time. But since this is a non-split team and it's printing uh, all the times for that plan, it's got multiple checkboxes here. And so this just helps our uh, volunteers just kind of make sure that they are checking off what we need them to do. So that's kind of a brief overview of checklists. Um, and you can see the documentation here will walk you through how to set it up. But you will have to create these plan note categories. And they do have to precisely match the name of your team and the name of your position with the word checklist at the beginning. Um, you'll also see here that I've got plan note categories that look similar to the checklist. They have video team, video playback, for example. It's got the team name, space, dash, space, the position name. Um, and so we'll get into that in just a minute and how that works. Uh, but if you set that up as well while you're creating these plan note categories, uh, you'll be set to use the full customization of this report. So plan item headers, um, I've got a variable here to show start of service header. And that's nice because it'll print this header right here automatically when the service actually starts. So I know for us here, we have a lot of what we call pre-service items. We might have a song or we want to do announcement slides or whatever, some kind of element really before the service starts. And for my team, this often means elements that they don't have to really uh, be focused on or paying attention to. It's just things that are happening before the service. And so you can choose that variable if you want to automatically print this header to come all the way across and kind of clearly identify the things that are pre-service 
and the things that are at the start of the service. Um, and then the next item here is you can print the plan item headers in line. So you can see I've chosen to do that. I print them in line here versus having them maybe show up as an entire green bar here at the top between every uh, time that that header would appear. It just makes your report a little bit smaller and it prints the same header just down here right before the item length of the first plan item in that header area. Um, and so that just kind of helps you save space on your report. But you know, if you want to print them as an entire row, you just set this value to false and it will change uh, to do that. Um, now this next feature is pretty cool. This helps our team a lot. I call it the highlight changes in columns. You'll see here that anytime for this example, anytime this column changes values, it will highlight it when it has changed. And so this helps our team if there is something important they need to pay attention to, they can see that it's just different. And so uh, I've chosen to have it highlight in green. You can style it differently in the CSS of the report if you want to. <coughs> um, but that's just, it just highlights them automatically and it'll do it for every column in that report. And so if you don't want that, you can just turn it off and this formatting will go away. But that's a very helpful feature for our team to track changes and things that they need to pay attention to. All right, this next section for printing plan items and lengths, you can choose the service time format here. So I've chosen I want an hour of the day and minute of the hour. Um, and if you are not familiar with this, you can Google the formatting for this. Uh, that's pretty standard date time formatting. Uh, and I, I chose not to print the plan item times, but do print the plan item lengths. So if you see on this report, I want to know that this is three minutes versus uh, if I chose to print the times, it would say nine o'clock because that's when this service starts. And then when it gets down to the next item, it might say 9.03. We found that really tracking the time is not as important as the length on the report. And so we just, we don't choose to print the time, but you certainly can if you'd rather have that. Um, it just, for us, it just saves a little bit of space on the report. Um, and then if you want to print zero links, you know, we often have things in here that uh, we don't say it takes any time, so we just put it in there as zero minutes, zero seconds. And so if you tell it to not print zero links, it'll just kind of skip over that. And then again, you can choose the plan item time format as well, which is where it would show up here. And I've chosen to have it represented as hour of the day, minute of the hour with the meridian, which would be the AM or PM. Um, it just makes it a little bit easier to read. So uh, again, I've got that turned off on my report, but you could turn it on and see how that looks. The next section here is the plan notes to print with every report. So these aren't plan item notes, these are just plan notes. So for example, you might have in your, uh, in your, cat, in your ministry type, you might have a general or something you want to tell just to the lighting team or even something to just the lighting operator on the lighting team, or something to, something to only your camera operators, or your entire video team. So if you create these plan note categories that match exactly to your positions and your team names, uh, you can choose to have them print in your report. So I've chosen here, I want every report to get this general category. Um, and then in addition to that, any plan notes named in the following format will automatically print for each team. Team name. So that means everybody on the video team will get a note that I put in the video team plan note category. And then team name, position name, plan notes that are named with that will automatically print out for that position. So let's look at an example. Here is my video director. And you can see that he automatically gets this general note that everyone gets. He gets one for the video team and he gets one for the video director. But if I scroll down to my next position, here's my technical director, they didn't get that video director note, but they did get the video team note, and they got the general note. Or if I got went to someone outside of the video team, let's say if I go down to my lighting person, which is on a different team, you can see that they only got the general note because that's all I configured for them. I haven't put in any notes for lighting team or lighting team dash lighting operator. 
And so that's a way to just automatically have those show up for who needs them. You can do that in your plan. You can come over here to the notes area and you can see here I've got the general note, the video team note, the video director's note, and that's all I have for this example. Um, and that's all they'll get. If I wanted to make someone else get a specific note, I could come down here and choose. Let's say I want the camera guys to get this note for camera ops only. Now, keep in mind, anybody that can edit this plan or view this plan can see these notes. So you're not putting in things that are secretive necessarily. You just want to make sure uh, that you're putting in something that only gets on the printed report in a certain way. So just make sure you realize that, that these, you know, everybody can see these notes. It's just a matter of what actually gets printed on the report. So that's how uh, the plan note categories work. And then at the very bottom of this, of this entire report is a scheduled people report. And you can choose how many copies you want to print, or you can set it to zero if you don't want it to print at all. So let's scroll all the way down and you can kind of see what this report looks like. So for Auditorium 2, it'll say, hey, here's who's scheduled in all these positions. Um, so this is helpful for us if we need to make a call Sunday morning, someone's not here yet, or we need to text them, we have a question. Uh, most of our team is pretty spread out across multiple areas and rooms uh, and even venues. And so it's just nice if I need to get a hold of someone pretty quickly, I've got their mobile number right here. And so I might want to have this print out multiple times because I might want multiple people to have it. Usually only my service producer gets this copy, but you might want to have more than one copy. So that's pretty flexible there. And then lastly, you can adjust the CSS styling for the entire report. So if CSS is your thing and you know what you're doing, feel free to make customizations here to change colors, font sizes, fonts, any of the, you know, just background colors and padding and however you want to control that, you can change all of these items here and it will automatically apply to the report. There are a few advanced editing areas where if you had maybe a, a extreme case of, of a certain delimiter you couldn't use in your fields, for a certain reason, this would be where you would adjust that, but generally you won't need to. And then lastly, it says do not edit below this line. This is where the actual code is for the report. So this is kind of how the report works. Um, so let me walk you through now. I'm just going to make a few changes. I'm going to come up here to the report code, and I am going to say I want to not do the logo and we will do checklists this time. We will not print them in the headers in line. Um, and we will not highlight note changes. We will turn on some item times. We'll leave the links on so you can kind of see how that works. And yeah, we'll just go with that. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to print it. And I like to use uh, the smallest margin available, but you could change that if you want to. And hit accept, and it will run. It does take a minute here to run because it is a lot of code that it's looping through a lot of different times to make it for all your positions. Then you open it up, and so here's how it looks different automatically. It's the same report, but now it's showing me the times and the lengths. You know, it's no longer highlighting over here. I've got the Headers now are no longer printing in line. They're printing uh, as an entire row. But you can see it takes up a little bit more room on the report to do it this way. Uh, but it's easily customizable. So you can just put this in, make all those changes, hit print, and it's quickly in a different format. So uh, I hope this helps give you a walkthrough of how this report works. If you would like to gain access to this report, it is for sale. Uh, so check out the blog post, and uh, there are instructions there on how you can obtain the report and put it into your Planning Center account and be on your way. So thanks for checking this out, and have a great day.